Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode in the chess making tutorial series. So right now our game is not playable actually because we have not defined this uh, function yet. So today we have a lot of new functions to s start adding including this one right here and that will all take place inside our chessmen script. So let's actually just switch over to that and get coding right away because well we have a lot to add. All right, so first of all, we're going to need to add a mouse up event. So that's an on mouse up. And inside this uh, function here, we're going to want to add destroy move plates. So when you actually click up on the mouse, we are going to want to destroy all previous move plates that exist and we will of course be adding this function later like usual and we also want to be initiating so initiate move plates because think about it if you click somewhere and those move plates appear for that chess piece then that's movement for that chess piece but if you click on a different chess piece now you actually want to move that chess piece and the old one was just the old one that you were considering moving and maybe you didn't actually move it. So we want those move plates that were placed on the board to be, well, removed. And yeah, of course for initiate move plates that's pretty simple. When you click on a chess piece you want to have the move plates for that one up here so you can move it. So now we can create the destroy move plates. And yeah, so for this, it's going to be pretty simple. We will just be creating an array of all the move plates. So in order to do that, we access the game object and we do find game objects with tag and that tag will be move plate. That is something else we will be adding later. So basically, we just create an array that contains all the move plates that exist currently inside our Unity game. And what we need to do is we actually need to go over all of these move plates and remove them. So we can just use a for, li for loop to just do that real quick. All right. So what we do is we call destroy, oops, and we do that on each element inside the array that we've created right here. And after that happens, then each of these move plates will actually be destroyed. All right, perfect. So next, what we need to do is we need to create that initiate move plates. So to do that, we just create initiate move plates, and again, public void. And we want to create a switch statement again. So depending on the name of this chess piece that we have here, we're going to need to do very different things. So there's the case of the black queen and also the case of the white queen. Even though one is for each player, they're both going to be the same. So we do not want to add break. We don't want that after this line because we want it to actually fall through and still ex execute this code no matter what. If it's a black or a white queen, it doesn't matter. So we will again be creating a new function which is line move plate. So what this is going to do is it's going to create an actual line of move plates starting at one zero. So these are the coordinates for that. and. We'll explain more of how this works later. We just need to get everything set up right now because initiate move plates handles all the cases. Because if you think about in a game of chess, the different pieces have different abilities for where they can move. So this switch statement is going to initiate all of that for us. All right. So we actually need to do this a bunch of times. We need to do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. 
because if you think of a black or white queen on a chess map, they can move diagonally down, they can move to the left, they can move diagonally up, in basically any direction in sort of like a star shape. So what these ones and zeros are telling us is just uh, increasing the x and increasing the y at every single step. So yeah, okay. And then negative one here, negative one and negative one, and then negative one and one, and then one and negative one. So that'll handle each of the cases for us here. And then after this, we do want to have a break because our next case is for the black knight and we don't want the black knight or white knight to have their code executed when it's actually just a queen. So for the black and white knight, it's a little bit simpler. We can just call L move plate, which we will be adding as well. So L move plate is going to handle how a knight can move in sort of a weird sort of direction. I just called it L because it's kind of like an L shape where it, where the knight can actually move. But yeah, I don't know what the proper name happens to be if there is one. So next is the bishop. We can have the black bishop and white bishop cases. Oops. So for the bishop, it also uses line move plate because a bishop can move in diagonals here. So I'll copy this code again, but this time we need four and it can just move in sort of the four different diagonals that are possible, which is simpler than the queen. And then next, we have the case for the black king and the white king. So we can call surround move plate, which if you know how a king moves, it can just move anywhere surrounding it. Okay, now case black rook. In case white rook. Okay, so the rook can also move in a line. So that can be one zero or zero one or negative one zero or zero and negative one and then break. And lastly, we actually have the pawns, and they're more interesting because a black pawn and a white pawn do not have the same, same movement abilities, actually. So right after we write black pawn, we will write pawn move plate, x board, and then y board minus one, and then break, because it's based on where the pawn actually is to decide where the pawn can move. It's a little bit more interesting than the other cases, which are really simple, actually. And then we have the white pawn, which we will say the same thing as this, except we will do plus one because, well, a white pawn will start at the bottom and it'll be able to move up, sort of. Okay, now let's just look through this code one more time to make sure we all have the right code written down because I know it's a lot. So I'll just scroll through it slowly.